Welcome to our fourth Sunday after Epiphany. Our readings for this morning include Micah 6, 1 through 8, 1 Corinthians 1, 18 through 31, which will be the basis, our text for our sermon, and Matthew 5, 1 through 12, the Beatitudes. Our uh, hymns for this morning include Blessed Jesus at Your Word, Son of God, Eternal Savior, and the people that in darkness sat. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We certainly live in interesting times. You've probably noticed that I don't often discuss the current events. Uh, so much that's in the news it passes so quickly. But God's word remains forever. And we spend so little time each week on God's word compared to the time spent on current events. That, is, that it is important to focus during our short time together on God's word, which helps us to deal with the emotional waves of the news, of those current events. But there is a phrase that <laughs> kind of stood out this week, wasn't there? How many, what was it? What was the, what was the theme uh, phrase? Uh, just two little words. Alternative facts. How can there be alternative facts, right? There are either, there's either truth or lies. If there is only truth or lies, then why are there so many different opinions in the world? Why are there so many disagreements? Why are there so many wars? If there is only one truth and one set of facts, then we should all be united, moving together peacefully, saving the world from whatever threatens to destroy us and, and all of creation. But sadly, this week is just another reminder of how divided we are. One group gathers at the beginning of the week to demonstrate for the, for the uh, rights of women who have not been treated fairly or equally, even in our society. Another group meets at the end of the week to demonstrate for the unborn and the elderly and lives that are not valued enough to keep them alive. One group calls a fetus a piece of tissue, like cancer. Another calls it a life, a person. One group says that this is the way to help people in need, while the other group says this isn't any help at all. One group thinks that we are destroying the environment, while another thinks that we can pollute as much as we want and it doesn't matter. One group calls it consenting adults, and another calls it adultery and sin. One group calls it just rewards, the other group calls it excessive profits and neglecting to love and care for our neighbors. Was Jesus just a man or was he the Son of God? From God's perspective, there is only one set of facts and one truth. But ever since Satan asked Eve in the garden, did God really say, there have been alternative interpretations of those facts and alternative ideas of truth. Sin not only leads us to do and think and say what is wrong, it also prevents us from knowing God's truth. We can't handle the truth. We can't see it. We don't want to know all the facts. Because then we would have to confess our sins. 
all of the places where we have not loved God with our whole hearts and where we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We all fall short. And if we understood that, we would fall down before God and beg for mercy. As much as we think that we know everything and get angry at people who don't see things from our perspective, we all fall woefully short of the truth from the Creator's perspective. Can you love a person that you always disagree with? Can you still talk to them patiently, lovingly, and listen to them? How many times do you hear children say, I know what I'm doing, but years of experience tell you that they don't know much. You want to try to save them from making the same mistakes that you make. That is what we sound like to God, like children saying, I know, I know, I'm not a baby anymore, let me do it. If only we could stop before everything that we do and pray for God's guidance on what we're about to partake on, to protect us, to help us to do things His way, according to His will, as we pray, Thy will be done, instead of our own imperfect thoughts and words and actions. But just like loving, patient parents and grandparents, God lets us go get ourselves into trouble and welcomes us back over and over. Why? Doesn't he have a limit? He does this because his own son Jesus took our punishment for us. Some people call it a declaration, or maybe some of you are wearing it as a piece of jewelry, but the cross is salvation. Not because it is pretty, but because Jesus died on one, carrying the punishment for all of your sins and the sins of all people of all time to one ultimate sacrificial death. These facts are folly to the Greeks and Romans and continue to be folly to all who are perishing. Of course they are. Lots of people died on crosses. The worst kind of people. Why would that matter to anyone? Uh, when was the last time you were concerned about a criminal's execution? And sure, innocent people are executed lots of times. It wasn't just Jesus' innocence. Those other people may not have been guilty of the crime they were being punished for, but they weren't perfect. Jesus was completely without sin, and then rose again from the dead. When was the last time a person rose from the dead? Three days after their death without any medical treatment. Never. Surely this was the Son of God. Surely this man demonstrated God's love and power by taking the punishment for all sin. And then comes back to life and gives his forgiveness in life by his power to all. Of course it sounds ridiculous, but if he did die and rise again, what else could it mean? Some people say it means nothing, or it means that we should strive for social justice. 
But God's word tells us that Jesus said it means life and salvation freely offered to all, freely given to you. This is fact and truth from God's perspective because he told us over and over in his word. And he proved it by his resurrection, by his son's resurrection. So now we look at the cross and say not a declaration, but a reminder of truth. God has demonstrated his power over sin and death and the devil and has given these gifts to you, forgiveness and eternal life. We are not saved by politicians or by political parties or by taking sides on current issues. We are saved by Jesus' death on the cross. When we know these facts, we beg God for mercy, and we thank him for his grace. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.